This isn't just any 3D printed RC car. This is Phoenix. I called it that because it's been broken, melted, snapped in half, then rebuilt so many times. I lost count. But I made myself a promise. The next car would be unbreakable, stronger, meaner, built for chaos. So meet the beast. And here is the best part. You don't just get to watch me destroy it. You can actually build this monster yourself. I am sharing all the STL files, all the parts list and step-by-step -step video instruction. Everything you need is linked down in the description. Today I am going to test it. I am going to push it way past its limit. And yes, this thing is going to suffer hard. Will it survive or will it explode into plastic confetti? Let's find out. Smart engineers would use a precise GPS device to measure its speed. My solution is to attach an old iPhone and see if the speedometer application shows valid data. <laughs> Luckily, the phone has survived, so I can continue my tests. <laughs> the maximum speed I got was 21 km per hour. But honestly, the test was kind of useless, and that's on me. I made the car whole an extra 300 gram with an old iPhone strapped on top. That is like asking it to race while carrying a brick. And the speed up, it's made for long runs, not short sprints in a parking lot. So yeah, rocky move. This time I'll do it right. I'll measure the actual distance and time. Luckily the parking slots are already marked perfectly for this test. All I need to do is measure one slot, set up the camera and run the RC car a few times to get proper measurements. And hey, if it doesn't break us, it makes us stronger, so I'll make the car sturdier. Let's crunch the numbers from the two best runs. And here is the crazy part. Both of them came out the same. One second, 150 milliseconds to cover the distance. The footage is slowed down four times and each spot is 256 centimeters. So after the mass, the car runs at 32 km per hour and that's about 20 miles per hour. That's way faster than I expected. Not pro level, but definitely not a toy anymore. And honestly, I'm proud of this. But the next test, they are going to push this car even further. With four wheels driving, it should handle tall grass. But let's find out the hard way. Well, I screwed up, the car stopped. And the reason? 
I wanted to impress you so badly that I turned off my common sense. I put a high-speed motor on grass. That's like asking a Formula 1 car to race in the mud and still win. And to make things worse, I added a badly shaped bumper. It worked like a plow, slowing the car down and putting even more strain on the motor. The result? The motor overheated, the plastic melted and the gear slipped right off the shaft. Turns out, plastic doesn't enjoy being slow cooked. But that's the beauty of this project. I can adjust the car, add more ventilation and update instruction with the right motor for the right terrain. Oh, and one more thing. If you hit dry grass, be prepared to clean. Inside, the car ends up looking like a bird tried to build a nest. The next test will decide the car's endurance. Two batteries to runs. Let's see how long it can last. Well, back to work. New day, fixed car, new test, let's see. This time the car survived, no damage. So let's get back to work. But then I heard that sound again. A very familiar one. And sure enough, just like the last time, the gear had fallen off the shaft. So yeah, after 10 minutes ride, I got it overheated again. I'm not sure what to do next, but I will definitely find out at home. Let's see. And indeed, I found out. First of all, I was wrong about the 10 minute ride. It actually took 23 minutes to drop the gear. For you, it felt like 10 seconds. The footage was sped up 400 times. And that's a lot. I expected the battery to die first, but once again, the motor was the big link. Looking closer, the gear had actually melted. That means the motor reached around 200 degrees Celsius, about 400 Fahrenheit. I was using the same high-speed motor as before and it turns out it just can't run for long on its own. So I'll start by adding a heatsink to the body. Another option would be using a slower, higher torque motor. But with Canada Post on strike, getting one might take a while. For now, the heatsink should help this car run until the battery dies, not its parts. I designed the modification, ordered a heatsink, printed all the parts, assembled everything again, and here is what I got. The magnet inside the motor is so strong that it actually stops the cooling fans. That drives me crazy, what the hell, who sells a heatsink that doesn't even work? I had to remove the fans, move them farther from the motor just to get them spinning. I ended up spending another 6 hours redoing the whole thing because of one terrible heatsink design. This is the third and I hope the last one test of endurance of this car. I've changed it a lot and uh, let's see how it works and if it helped or not. 
the same weather, the same conditions. Let's go. <laughs> That was truly long time. <laughs> the car stopped, the motor is cold, everything worked fine. Finally the car stopped because of the charged battery, not because of a broken part. So the test is successful, we can move on next. <laughs> To be honest, after 3 days of testing, I think that this car can do better than just 32 km per hour. So I'm going to test it again. Same procedure, mark the spot. And drive. Wow, did you see how fast that was? Let's slow it down and take a closer look. The car covered the distance in 0.267 seconds. A bit of quick mass put that at 35 km per hour about 22 miles per hour. That's even faster than before. A new personal record. But I'm not stopping here. There is still more performance to uncover. Next test. While I was working on improvements, winter arrived and that gave me the perfect excuse for a new challenge. Snow drifting. It looks great, but here's the reality. The speed controller is not waterproof. Even though the product description says it is, once the car was fully packed with snow, the ESC failed. That revealed another design flaw. Luckily, the fix was simple. I closed the front cover to prevent snow from being pushed directly into the ESC. After testing, the issue was completely gone. That ends the first phase of testing. The RC car is now ready to be driven properly. In the next video I'll focus on durability, dropping it from heights, smashing it into obstacles and seeing what actually breaks. And if you want to build the exact same car yourself, all the STL files are linked below, along with a full playlist of detailed assembly videos. If you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment, I'll personally send you a 50% discount for the files. Thanks for watching, more tests are coming, stay tuned!